Alrighty. Howdy, neighbors, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Last time we finished day two of the day two trial, um, she revealed that they forged evidence, which is always lovely. And now we're gonna go talk to Marshall because he needs a hug. <clears throat> February 24th, police station, criminal affairs department. I don't see Detective Gumshoe anywhere. Things are kind of quiet around here today. You're right. Chief Detective seems the same though. Why don't we look for some other people to talk to? Alright, we can come back here later. I see who's the fuck out of you. Hello. This is one of the detectives. Mulling like something to himself. That's it. The villain used the time machine. Very clever indeed. That would explain the alibi. The future might not be so far away after all. He's not writing a report. He's writing a novel. It's great. Alright. <clears throat> May 24th. Police department entrance. Hey! Oh yeah, the music! Turn it up a little bit for myself. Alright. Howdy, Bambina. It's Mr. Marshall. I never thought things turn out this way when I woke up this morning. Hey, Sada Sada. You never know where left will lead you, huh, Bebena? I should have known my luck had run out when old Billy dried up this morning. Billy? This is Pet Cactus. Hey, where are you headed? It's over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a volunteer appearance. But we all know what we come back. Sorry, but you can't go to the evidence room today, partner. <coughs> Mr. Marshall. Why did you do it? Why did prospectors head west? If ever there's a case I need to know the truth about, hear this one. <coughs> Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall. Would you mind telling us exactly what happened? Hmm. Well, that won't be getting to stay close today. Nope. <coughs> Time about dark. Something was fishy with the trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me either. All the detectives thought so. What do you mean fishy? The facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. The murder weapon? You mean that switchblade and knife? The broken tip? That was Joe Dog, sorry. <clears throat> but in the initial autopsy report, a question was raised. A question? The knife was not a perfect match to the wound the victim sustained. Because it's broken. You can clearly see the fact that it's broken. What does that mean? It means there's a good chance the knife was not the murder weapon. It's broken! <laughs> However, in the report that was finally submitted, that probability had been erased. The facts have been sealed with the forged evidence. That kid left behind scars on all of us. The scars that the SL9 incident left behind. That, that could be about you, my guy. Oh, not about you. About Joe Brady. He died. I got the looks, but he got the brains. He's one of the best prosecutors around. <coughs> I just made detective when it went down. Or was our first case together? How old was he? Your brother. I was 27 at the time. I was awarded the highest honor that very day. <coughs> highest honor? You mean the okay, prosecutors? I knew it. What are you looking at me like that for? It's an honor for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have really been close with his brother. The day the SL9 incident took place. What was the same day as? That's right. It was the day of the evidence transferal. Interesting. Oh, we did one that morning, and my nightfall there was thunder. 
I can't believe two years of already oh have gone by already. I tried to seal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. At least someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered. And the evidence locker was empty. Star time. There was something going on behind the scenes of the case. We all knew that later. Yeah, detective involved in the investigation. Save one was taken care of. Taken care of. This guy was fired, and now it's been booted and boxed away in a tiny room. What up, Detective Goodman? They did something to him. Commissioners would get suspicious. Nah. <coughs> if we're careful enough not to be too obvious. They? What are you talking about? They don't get upset, they may not. I mean, a Dame again and Lone Sky. Yeah, this guy. Investigation me, Dame again is second to command Lone Sky. There was a person on the force who had heard of that duo. That case was the biggest step in both their careers. Our plea has ended. Why don't you transfer to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah, then we get the new chief police arranged for that to happen. Never been the same since she left. No one who knew her said so. The prosecutor Scott was totally different when she was a detective. Now that you mention it, my sister isn't like that too. <coughs> Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sad, Bavina. But the secret is too well guarded. I never found out. And the secret. It started two years ago. Ah, oh, there you have it. As a story, did you enjoy it, partner? It was certainly enlightening. There's one thing I, for sure, I found out in court today. My boy Edgeworth is my enemy. It was the one who used falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. He was someone to damn him gay. Don't blame me. Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. Oh. And too bad I won't be around to work with you. When you become a real scientific investigator. Adios, Femina. Bye. Very 24th Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. The place is always pretty empty, but today it's deserted. It must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're on the conference room. Oh, thanks. Yeah, actually they talked to us. With the chief prosecutor saying what she did, and decision about what to do about Mr. Edgeworth, not to mention our statement to the media and tomorrow's trial. The more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is the word usually used for those. Sir, we'd like to have a look around Chief Gant's office. Use the connecting hallway to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Really? You want to escape for us to go in there? I mean, you're not a police officer or anything. Hey, you're right, you can't go in there. It's off limits. Now I see where Detective Gumshoe gets his unique charm. What are we waiting for? Let's head to the Chief's office. Sure. <clears throat> oh! <laughs> this is unique. Hey, he has a weird face, too. Uh, where am I? <clears throat> this is off silly. That's what it said on the door. Put the pipe boy in. It's real, isn't it? I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. They used to call me a little Miss Bosch. Bach. Thought I was a genius. I could remember where C was. Hmm? Oh, it's you two. Cheap gant. <laughs> Paper here's waiting in his desk. So, right out. Have you been swimming lately? No, I haven't. I think 
out of the zoo anyway. I could appreciate that. I've had my hand full too. The Mr. Marshall's was called up. And Nana's provocative statement. Provocative statement? Oh, you mean about the forged evidence? Here's the fastest that incident. Bye, how time flies. See that big picture on the wall over there? The sword is gone. The sword is supposed to slash right through here. Because you can see it in that photo and it's not there. <clears throat> the picture of Lana, Neil, and I. And me. This is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. We took it to commemorate our work together. I'm not right with this picture. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it. The vase! Oh fuck! I, mean, <laughs> I was so focused on the trophy, I forgot about the vase! Uh, where's ours? It's the same vase. Front team picture added to the book order. Anyway, I like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm gonna lock up here. So, let's go out together. Oh, but this office. There was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long since been over. There was no need to investigate it anymore. About the same. We'd still like. Oh, all the same, we'd still like to look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. I hope get out. I have meaning to attend. Looks like we aren't welcome. Seems that case isn't over with yet after all. What do you mean? Chief Gunn denied a request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean like a clue? There's gotta be a way we can get inside the chief's, the chief's office. Maybe we can ask the, the guy? February 24th, police station, criminal affairs department. Or Gumshoe! <clears throat> oh yeah, let's ask him. Hey, pal. Hey, Gumshoe. Church of Gumshoe. Aren't you supposed to be in a meeting? I'm a. Just take a breather. My feet hurt. You're sitting so long. Actually, I'm serving everyone coffee. Looks like Detective Gumshoe's still out of the loop. Hey, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No. Why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battles between you two in court. It's so serious. It's because of what my sister said. That's basically what it all boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago. Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. And ew. Uh, Edgeworth! How did Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. This guy is the guilty party here, isn't she? Sorry, man. Fairless, the prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. But only that. As you know, there's been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. It's amazing telling that the prosecutor kept him safe from those who don't like him. <clears throat> but now with this. Are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only has that. But he's young, and a good recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey, Dick, keep up the good work. Yes, sir. Please go to lunch again sometime. My treat. Yes, sir. You gotta take me back to that joy sometime, okay, Dick? Yes, sir. 
It seems like you don't have any problems with enemies. Oh well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. That would make for an interesting trial. Actually, I took a little look at the file earlier, while the coffee was brewing. I think genuinely concerned about Edgeworth. Did you find out anything? The only evidence that Dark left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... He killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. Me. This Detective Gosher never realized Emma was that girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what is it? Let's see. It has nothing to do with the murder weapon. I forgot. I'm sovereign summer here, okay? Threats of recollection never failed to impress. It also fails to impress. I should show him the murder weapon. My dog is memory. Dark's friends. Joe Dark was 42 at the time of his crime. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. A businessman. Who made him take to serial killing? When Dark was going from work, he hits him with his car. His car? It was an accident. An accident, yes. But it just formed him into an animal. An animal. They killed a man that witnessed the accident. The lady who saw the second crime. He broke back just then, he killed them too. Then he buried the bodies. A jogger came across the scene and he killed Sabre. Finally, he turned himself in. This was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. He turned himself in. In the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Executor Marshall. That car was witnessed by someone too, but look, luckily Dark was arrested on the spot. It was a good thing that last witness was a killed. That last witness. AKA Emma. Anyway, let's go ahead and show you a knife. A broken knife. Uh, I'll take that. What <coughs> this? Is that? As a tag attached to it, with the label SL9 is it on it. I this, was, this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case closed, the knife's been locked away in a locker. My day detective Goodwin was murdered. This locker, oh, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. And was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. That's it. I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again. I forget, like, in the middle of talking. Murder weapon. This knife, it was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? Right. We traced it back to the store. He found it at. Plus it has fingerprints on it too. And no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? So it's like right out. We take a good look at the knife. You'll see that it's broken. You have to take a good look to notice that. Yeah, well anyway. Take a guess at where the broken off tip of the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where is it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside of his own body. He found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet. Down in the last fiber. That's pretty conclusive. Here's the autopsy report. Down to the back. Died from punctured heart and lung. A knife tip was in the wound. Unfortunate. Which blade knife? A broken tip was found in the victim's body. Belonging to murderer Joe Dark. Switch blade knife updated in the court record. Well, they have a nutshell. 
That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Gant. It's not money. I guess concern with the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out now, and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around if that's okay. My detective's ID card can unlock the door. Really? A fellow civilian in there. I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh. That hell. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was stacked with good ones. I don't work either. The data was deleted the day you died. Oh. In other words, if she was our only chance of getting into that. Not necessarily. Because can't Marshall also. Marshall's ID? I wonder if there is something we could show him that would make him change his mind. Probably not. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Gumshoe. I will be leaving now. Oh, I already talked with you. I'm gonna talk to Edward with February 24th, Prosecutor's Office, Underground Parking Lot. I'm not here today. I'm not even Miss Star. I was probably busy looking for what exactly went down to the evidence room. That must be where the detectives are. We proved in court today that on the day of the crime, no one was murdered in the evidence room at 5.15 p.m. Yeah, I thought we were finally making some headway in our case. That said, it looks like we ended up, or we just ended up making Lana look even more guilty. Hang in there, Lana. I need to hang in there. This this trial. Let let's talk about this case. Let's talk about the case in general because the first case, it was like a very a very basic case, right? Super basic, run of the will, run of the mill. Wham bam, thank you, ma'am. A good tutorial. Got it done. I wanted to be a little longer, but that's totally fine. The second case was the little longer I was looking for. Still teaching us new things. We were still getting a whole bunch of new info, but it was still enjoyable and fun. And I wanted to like, you know, keep going to see what was up. This case in particular, and like all the cases after, we're just getting longer and longer and longer and longer. And I feel like this one has been unnecessarily long. Like, I feel like I've been playing this one trial for a month now. Even though I know I haven't, it feels like it. Anyway, let's continue. I've got a fun of the answer by tomorrow. Well, right now I want to see if Mr. Edgeworth is alright. February 24th, High Prosecutor's Office, room 1202. I wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is. Looks he's writing something. What are you doing here? Saying hey, girly! She is quick to fill out here on the floor. Good day in court, huh? Hmm. I've had to live the past two years with the rumors flying around. There's another allegation to me. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm rooting for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So what do you want? Like some people, I don't have all day. First of all, I want to know what this is. <coughs> what were you writing before? Oh, it's right. Let's take a look. Are you crazy? Just sitting right there. Let's distract him. Check it out. Hey, that's worth. <laughs> that's just a ghost shoot at the window there. Oh no, he's falling to the ground. Hold on. Just let me see what the girl's doing crawling around my feet. Yeah, hey, look. What? A letter of. Re re recognition? If you're having trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It's a letter of resignation. Resignation. It's worth you don't mean. I'm tired, right? I feel as if something inside of me has died. Mr. Edgeworth, none of it's your fault. I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. The path I've walked hasn't been a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Oh, I think he's serious. 
Is it right? Please, you have to do something. It's a letter of resignation. What if I could use it for anything? Letter of resignation. Edgeworth's discarded letter of resignation. He's serious. Letter of resignation put into pocket. My man, no! Poor Jenkins. No excuse for what I've done. Years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to. Nothing I could do could erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean that the evidence was falsified. Please took Parman to the prosecutor's office, share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error. My responsibility as the prosecutor in charge. The fact remains the same no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Edgeworth. I take pride in my work, which is why you're quitting. Tell me why. Why did it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. Let's talk about tomorrow! Yay! Fun! <laughs> Are you up for the trial tomorrow? First last year's trial and now this one. Seems all you do is worry about me. I literally saw you trying to quit. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. Mr. Edgeworth, you just walk out of the trial. It was the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. I'll bet that's what my superiors are banking on. Never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? That's of evidence. Seems too short. Most lists are in twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists. That is all. Janine Marshall was murdered. I became prosecutor for the case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. With the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. It was really the only thing on my mind at the time. So we just saw a picture taken around that time. A picture. Nothing seems strange about it. Day of the crime. Could you tell us again what happened that day? The day Detective Goodwin was murdered. You are participating in the ceremony of the station, right? I don't care for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you awarded this. Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning and go over to the police department. Finished up at the office. Yes, just all the ends. Clerical stuff. I plan on, on returning to the office that day. It is until I was asked to take something back. Take something back. This. Oh yeah. Chief Gad asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes. There was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. It was so we heard yesterday. You came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to. That's right. How many do you want to bet it was the police chief? This picture was hanging in the hall of Chief Gant's office. <coughs> Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He had just started making a name for himself. He said he was taken when he received the King of Prosecutor's Trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes. You're from Mr. Marshall as well, It's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. I don't know. Or what? That's what the official prosecutor's trophy looked like until two years ago. There was a design story behind it. Story? That was interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? Simple way. Contradiction. That's what the award is based off of. This award originates from the ancient Chinese trial. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, and the second means sword. Have you heard the story? Me? No, oh, sure, everyone knows that. Why didn't you tell it though, for ever's sake? Very well. I don't know.
Long ago in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed would slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield that claimed to withstand any weapon. Hmm. Wait a minute. Objection! Look at them contradict each other. Not perceptive. Then again, look at the sword before the right? Anyway, as you mentioned, the descriptions of those items discredit them both. The king pointed out the merchant was left speechless. Unless the Chinese word for contradiction was born. Oh, I see. So the chipped shield and the broken knife symbolize. Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words. But it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion. Even if the results are sometimes as ugly as this. Wow. Thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. I learned something new today. That's funny. That's so. Why are we only given a shield? You have to ask Chief Gant. Years ago, he had the halberd part of the award abolished. Chief Gant. King Prosecutor's Trophy updated in the court record. King Prosecutor's Trophy. Two years ago, the halberd was removed at Gant's behest, giving it its current form. I feel like I'm gonna end this episode here. And then we'll once again try to break into his office. I mean, ask nicely to enter. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will see you later.